Dear colleagues, this I sustained blunt trauma about two months back. The patient is a nine-year-old boy. I have taken up this case for surgery. See, I have placed the main incision just behind the limbus. I have cut the conjunctiva and then this is the main incision. The tunnel length is adequate. I don't want to put a suture. One side port has been made on the right side and this is another side port on the left side. I want to use bimanual irrigation aspiration in this case. That's why two side ports. Now I want to stain the anterior capsule with tripan blue dye. And this is air bubble. Another this air bubble, this is tripan blue dye. The dye is sprayed uniformly over the anterior capsule. And then the dye is washed out. We can see multiple sphincter tears. Sphincter tears at multiple points in this case. So the trauma was quite severe. I could see a retina just two weeks back. Within two weeks, this cataract has become intumescent kind. So, uh, what I plan to do is, I want to do a small rexis. There is a lot of convexity and the anticapsule is taut. So, what I plan to do is, I want to do a small rexis. Here it is. Very small rexis at the anterior pole first with the help of these uterida forceps. As I have told in one of my previous videos that when you use uterita, you must apply an upward thrust on the anterior leaf to prevent leakage of viscoelastic substance. Now I am using a 23 gauze Simcoe cannula to remove some lens matter. In this case, the nucleus has not formed. All is very soft lens matter. The patient is a 9 year old boy. And now, this is aspiration of lens matter. Now I go to the left side board and aspirate some more lens matter. Yes. In this case, since the patient is nine year old and I am doing this case under local anesthesia, under peripulbar anesthesia. Since the patient will be able to cooperate for YAG laser capsulotomy, I don't want to do anterior vitrectomy and posterior capsulorexis in this case. And now I am enlarging the minirexis and doing a rexis of optimum size. So the mini rexis is being enlarged with the help of uterita. The capsule is elastic and tends to go to periphery. So we have to apply pull judiciously so that we get an adequate sized round rexis. It's a fun to do rexis in children. There's a tug of war between the capsule which tends to go to periphery and surgeon's uterita forceps. It is almost impossible to do rexis with needle in pediatric patients. So the residents, uh, the uh, eye surgeons must learn to use uterita forceps. Uterita forceps becomes very useful in intumescent cataracts and pediatric patients where the tendency of the capsule is to run to periphery. 
so to prevent prevent rexis run out we must learn to use iterative forceps and it is very easy so the cortical the lens matter has been removed there are some cells and those are actually some kind of fibrous cells which cannot be removed by polishing so um, this is a technis one intraocular lens when we load the lens both the haptics should be on the anterior surface inside the cutis and the anterior surface of the optic of the lens the lens is now being implanted in the capsular bag I had arranged a multiple multipiece lens also in this case because if I can't do rexis properly if there is rexis run out then I may have to place a lens in the sulcus and then multipiece technis intraocular lens will be ideal in this case however the rexis was nice and I have placed the lens in the capsular bag and after a few weeks I want to do ear glazer capsulotomy in this case now what I'm doing is I am pulling the iris with the help of a Sensky hook very a mild pull what has happened is the iris has gone to periphery and if I just pull it with Sensky hook it is coming and the this much dilatation was not because of mediatic drops it was because of atonic people and now I have to clean the viscoelastic substance that I have used to implant the lens so in this case what I want to emphasize is capsulorexis in pediatric patients for capsulorexis we should use type and blue dye there are studies that say that conclude that it causes some changes in the anterior capsule the anti-capsule rigidity changes it becomes a little rigid and it helps in capsular access and then in such cases when there is too much convexity of the anterior capsule we can do a small rexis remove some lens matter and then enlarge the rexis to optimum sized one now after cleaning cortical matter uh, sorry after cleaning the viscoelastic substance I found that anterior chamber became shallow and I have injected an air bubble and now I want to hydrate the side ports nicely so that these wounds become waterproof and this much hydration is enough and this is the other side put hydrating this much and this is enough so when the side put is of adequate length even if the side put is more than one millimeter in width 
it seals very nicely by hydrogen. And now I form the entry chamber and conclude the case. Now see, since the main incision was made behind the limbus, just behind the limbus, and since the tunnel length is adequate, there is no leakage of BSS from the main incision and I need not hydrate the main incision. Thank you very much for watching. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. You will be encouraged to take up pediatric cases.